parking tickets and leave me alone. Stick to something you know about. Listen, my daughter was about your age. Then she met a guy like you. Now she's dead. You still believe in ghosts, Pea Brain? He's a closet! Don't hurt me, please! Don't keep me waiting for those onions, Herman! This is all the whiskey you possess? Everyone out of the way of the bulldozer! Hello and welcome to Hello, This is the Doom Show. I am Richard. Folks, we have a person to talk to. An actual manly man who stands too tall to reach the normal microphone. We had to scoogee one up his leg, secret (laughs) style, over the last three weeks. Now it's near his mouth so we can record. I'm talking, of course, about the worst introduction I've ever given anyone Jacob Gustafson. <laughs> Thank you. You know, no, that's that that's that's good. I like that. Um, also, bonus points for being able to say my name correctly. That's that's uh, you just you just you just trotted that right out and just rolled right off your tongue. That's well, great. Well, uh, I I used to work at the the circulation department of my library, so I got to get in contact with a lot of very strange names that make yours seem very very normal by comparison. So. See, my name is normal. Uh, it's phonetic. It doesn't take any weird. Like people <laughs> want to throw a bunch of flavor on it when they when they say it. Like I've gotten so many weird pronunciations, and I'm like, dude, it's just phonetic. Like you just, it's literally just how it's spelled. That's how you say it. And they always want to. They always want to throw a goo. They the always goo. want. They always. They're like Mr. Gustafus' son, and I'm like, what is? Why are we going over these peaks oh, and valleys? It, it's it, just. It's just Gustafson, like Gustafson. It's no, like, I know why. I know why. It's because of freaking uh, uh, Frozen, because of Gustav, right? Uh, you know, that's uh, I guess, but it's been that way since I was a wee a wee child. Like, oh, okay. I, I don't think I ever had a teacher that ever did like didn't butcher my name, um, which is funny because it's it's um, unbearably common, like in the Midwest. Um, it's it's like Smith. Or whatever, like it's super common, except <laughs> except where I live, it is not. Um, so yeah, no. In fact, I don't even like I'm I'm a teacher, and I don't even make my students say my name. I just have them call me Mr. G. Yes, because I'm like, listen, let's just make it, let's just make this easy. Um, you know, and and they frequently have names that are very difficult for me to say. And I'm like, look, you're gonna butcher my name. I'm gonna butcher your name. Let's just cut to the chase. You can just call me Mr. G. <laughs> You don't have to. We don't have to climb that mountain. And please tell me if I say your name wrong, because I probably will. And you're like, and I'm calling all of you Randy, <laughs> <clears throat> folks. Uh, my pal Jacob here. We go pretty far back. We've known each other for several years now. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this is your. Well, unfortunately for the audience. Unfortunately for my failure. Um, this is your first time on the Doom Show. Was it? No, we, I we think were just talking so. about that. Was was it? I or think were I was, you on my podcast. I was Is only was? on Good Movies for Bad People. You did that show with our really? pal Christian many, many moons ago. And um I yes. think I was on twice. Maybe really? once. It was definitely Brad and I guested to do um Perfume of the Lady in Black. I don't remember I thought that was your episode for your uh, no, show. No. Oh. Not to my knowledge. <laughs> that doesn't seem like a movie that we would have covered. It seems like a film that you would have we covered. We definitely how, how I think strange. Brad and I picked it. I think y'all gave us a choice. Okay. A, a, a choice of choices. I had no idea. <laughs> I, I all these years I've thought that that was that I was on yours. How about that? Hey, we'll we'll download it. We're fixing it now. We're fixing That's it. That's right. We're fixing it with nothing but tape. We're taping ourselves to each other. That's the, right. Uh, but yeah, you are an author now. You have written freaking a trilogy of yes. books. You've written the awful, awesome books, a journey through the wide world of so bad they're good movies. And folks, they're on Amazon. Check them out. They're full. And I want to say this as weirdly as possible. They're full of love <laughs> for movies. <laughs> Why, thank you. Yes, they are. A lot of times when people talk about the so bad they're good, it, it's um, uh, very 
unkind yes and and, and very uh, uh i'm better than you and look at how stupid these people are who made this stupid movie and i'm so much smarter than they are and and i don't feel that way at all uh about these films I have a lot of love for them. I would be just as excited to meet these filmmakers as I would uh, to meet, you know, uh, more appreciated, uh, uh, shall I say, uh, directors and writers and, and actors. You know, like I, these people are filmmakers too. It's just they just make really like alien, strange films that are <laughs> inter entertaining in a different way, but they're still entertaining. And no matter what, it's incredibly difficult to make a film. Oh God. Like it, like super hard. So yeah. like all these people have done more than I've ever done. So I can't, I can't sit here and, and, and Lord myself above them. So yeah, that's, 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 I would like to think that that's the tone of the book is that it's more appreciative and, um, joyful than, than, uh, negative and snide. Yes. Your, your enthusiasm for your subject, uh, subjects really comes across and that's, you know, knowing your, your tastes and films after listening to you talk about movies for so long, like I, I knew something like this, I knew these were going to be something along those lines of just, I know you love this shit. So it's going to come across in the pages. Um, the other thing I'm, I'm really, really stoked about, especially when we think about <laughs> the freaking, uh, dare I say it, the post pandemic bull slap world right now we're in pandemic bull slap world is a sense of building a community of people that are going to join together and bond over these movies. You even have a guide like instructions on how to host a movie night. Yeah. Well, um, for sure. And, and that's honestly like the whole point of the book is that I want you to watch these movies it's not that I'm trying to scare you away from them. It's that, no, you should watch this. And if you're going to watch this, you have to watch it with other people because it's way more fun. Um, in fact, some of them are unbelievably fun to watch with people, but would probably be about as much fun as smashing your thumb with a hammer by yourself. <laughs> you know, like when you watch them together, somehow – it like transmutes the movie into something that is so amazing, but by yourself, it's not the same experience at all. Like you have to watch them with other humans. And so that is a big part of the book is, is to try to encourage people to watch them with people, with others. And that's why I have the guide in there. Like, because I did it. Um, that's, uh, that's actually how I made my circle of friends. Oftentimes people like you and I, who are like way, way far in the weeds when it comes to films, it's like we can't really talk to people about like the latest Marvel movie because I don't know about you, but I usually don't care. I'm mm -hmm. like, whatever it is. Like I would never have seen any of them. Not to, again, they're fun, whatever. Like yeah. there's, if you like them, you like them. I'm not, I gl I'm glad that you like them. I'm just not ex personally, not excited about them. I've watched many of them because I have children and I watch them with my children. Um, but for me personally, I'm not like, Oh yeah, I got to go out and go see this thing. It's more like I want to look under the rocks and like rotten logs and find <laughs> the weird, creepy crawly movies that nobody else is paying attention to. That's what I'm excited about, which, you know, makes me a, crazy weirdo and it's hard to find people who want to engage with that with you and so the guide is there at the beginning to kind of help you have like the most positive experience you can with with people like if you've if you've convinced people to come over and watch one of these like movies which is already a non-starter for some because you're like it's terrible you should come watch it it's like what <laughs> i'm not gonna do that like can't we just watch like something that's good no it's terrible and that's why we have to watch it you should make it like as pleasant of an experience for them as possible so they'll come back and do it again right so when i you know, I'm waiting for like uh, Whispering Corridors Part Six to come out. <laughs> right. I'm gonna rewatch Loki because I am a shill for Marvel. Like, <laughs> what gets me interested and excited about cinema is somebody coming from left field and showing me something that I haven't seen before right. that I can't that I can't predict. That's that's what I love about like some of the stuff that. Vinegar Syndrome is digging up because, you know, we're all waiting for something like Death Screams, which is like the, the, the gold 
at the bottom of the frickin' river slasher where the only version anyone ever saw of that was the fucking nightmare VHS version where all of the night scenes are invisible to your naked eye. Like, it's so hard to see what's going on. But then for every home run, like, obvious home run of finding this slasher that everyone's been waiting on, like people like me have been waiting on, there's 16 movies that, like, Vinegar Syndrome or Severin will dig up where mm-hmm. you're like, what the hell is this thing? Yes. Where, yes. like, the, the religious... And it'll look beautiful. <laughs> right. It's amazing. Like, I mean, obviously, Death Screams looks freaking gorgeous. But they put out um, Day of Judgment, which is the the Christian slasher. They, they made a slasher movie that it was initially began... It's very obvious that the slasher sequences are slapped onto the movie. It was a religious film to teach people not to be sinners. And in order to drive the point home and to make a profit... They went ahead and slapped some decapitations and, and scythe slashings in it. Um, and I'm not saying I enjoyed that movie. I I actually kind of hated it. But it's like the fact that it even exists uh-huh. in 2021 for people to watch. I guess 2022 right. by the time this episode comes out is just freaking bonkers to me. Or, or uh, like, uh, they put out Bloodbeat, which was one that what? was like, ooh, right? <laughs> like, ooh, who who was clamoring for? I mean, I had seen oh Bloodbeat because I yeah. had found like a obscure like VHS dub, and when they put that out, I was like, you got to be kidding me! Yeah. You put out Bloodbeat and and wow. uh, Winter Beast, you know, like these movies <laughs> that are just like, wait a minute, like really. This, what really you, unusual this, yeah people had this, a vision this is on blu-ray yeah like yeah right and i'm never gonna listen to a marvel podcast like i'm not <laughs> like i don't care never gonna listen to any bullshit like that no. but i'll listen to your podcast because you find all kinds of hidden gems and your personal interests are not there's like there's like a venn diagram <laughs> Where like there's an overlap there, but like both of us are are bi- definitely oh, lovers man. of str- like cinema. That anyway, there, there's there's a Venn diagram, but we're we're both like out there on the edges. Yes. And so I really like listening to your podcast because then you can expose me to stuff that maybe you find is I don't know like a no brainer. Like how could you not know this thing exists? But I don't know what exists yeah. because I'm not like totally obsessed with. Uh, Jolly. I like Jolly and I watch them throughout the year, but I don't watch like a ton, but I, but listening to your podcast always makes me want to watch more. And the same thing with slashers, like slashing slashers are not my favorite at all. Like I like monster movies, but then when I listen to you talk about it, I'm like, man, I think I gotta, I think I gotta dig in. (laughs) What is this maniac I'm listening to seeing these friggin' things? (laughs) And then, and then the Venn diagram overlaps when you do an episode with Jeffrey because it's always something weird. Oh yeah, like black, like uh, um, Tales from the Quad Dead Zone. It's like, oh, that's one that I've seen. See? There you go. You know what I mean? So there is, there is like a an interesting overlap between our interests, and and that is super cool and exciting to me. Versus like, I'm gonna listen to two guys talk about like Marvel movies, right? Like, I, I don't care. I want to listen to you. I don't want to listen to like two dudes who know everything about Marvel. That eh, that doesn't interest me very much personally. <laughs> and and same token uh, for you is when I flip through all three of these books, like I thought I knew it was going to be in the horror one. And I thought I knew it was going to be in the sci-fi one. The only one that I had any success with like just predicting what was going to be in in the pages of the freaking volume was the action one like cuz i i think i picked up uh, a lot more of your your tastes in action movies and still all three volumes my percentage of what i've seen to what i've never heard of or maybe i've seen the cover before of the vhs is 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 ridiculous like the 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 gap is so wide you're 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 i could spend years jacob tracking down all these freaking movies to watch in every volume even the horror one i'm like what 
<laughs> what is well, this? Well, and I, I've got uh, I've got volume two of each one of these books. They're already written. Oh I have God. a guy. Who, I have a guy who's editing them. They're the same length, um, and I feel like volume two is better. Um, like they're more obscure um, nice. picks in, in, in all three volumes. Like I feel like. I feel like they're better. I feel like volume two is better and I am writing volume three. I mean, it's the same thing with you, right? Like oh, yeah. it's the exact same thing. It's like, you think, well, maybe I've covered, I, maybe I've covered it all, but no, no, no I have, no, I haven't. So, so the first volume of, of awful awesome is the action one. And yes. uh, you you were very kind to send this to me, and I freaking love it. And I'm like, my buddy Jason, who I've shown um, uh, three or four movies from that uh, Girls and Guns set, the the you know like mm-hmm. Hard Ticket to Hawaii and freaking right the Andy Serkis yeah. Uh, this book, I think, if I showed this to him, mm-hmm. that'd be it. Cause you know, like he he's 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 loving this kind of stuff. So I should probably just get this for him. I'll make it a little stocking stuffer for his New Year's present since you should. freaking Christmas is over. You should. There's there's lots of good stuff that's <laughs> uh, that's similar, yes. um, but different. Um, that that's yeah. I mean, it, for me, like the go to if you if you want to get a whole bunch of people together at your house. And you want to watch, although I guess today you can't, a a, a sensible right. number right. of people at your house to watch a, an an awful awesome movie. A so bad is good. You like action is is the mine that it's 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 the hole that never you can never get it all out. <laughs> like it's just there's so much bad, hilarious, over the top, macho, vanity <laughs> action movies, which are the best. Like. Just a little pro tip: if you're if you're looking through on like Tubi or whatever, because that's where a lot of this stuff lives. If the same guy wrote it, directed it, and starred in it, you got a, you got a strong yeah. chance that it is going to be hilarious because there's no filter. There was nobody to say, "Hey, you know, maybe maybe this isn't such a good idea," because he's just doing it all. And those are usually nice. the most fun. Um, that's what I look for when I see that, like when the credits are going by and I'm like, I'm paying attention. Okay. Who produced it? Okay. I'm seeing that name who wrote it. Okay. Same guy. Who's the director. Okay. We're three for three. Is it the actor? <laughs> All right. This, this is good. This is going to be some macho ego stroking. He's going to be like a secret agent and a sex machine. And he's going to have quips that are yes. terrible, but everybody thinks are funny you know, like that's the movie is it. They're usually the most dad, dad right. movies ever, you know, like just total male fantasies <laughs> that are just so bad. Um, those are, nice. those are usually winners. So, so for yeah, sure. I, I, I flipped through the action uh, today to kind of grab two that I've seen that I, I would love to hear any of your thoughts on. Um, the first one from action is the Holy flame of the martial world. From 1983. Ooh, okay, so I, I I have a I got a good story about that one. Well, sort of. Uh, so I I I used to have a bad movie night um, here locally uh, in my in my town. I for the for the listeners, I, I live in a town that has forty thousand people, and we're a half an hour from Boy. anybody. So like it's pretty it's isolated enough and small enough that it's very hard to find anybody who's interested in this kind of weird stuff. And so um I was working from home. I had no opportunity to even meet coworkers. So I was like, gosh, I really need to like meet people and I want to meet people that want to watch wacky stuff. And so I went to my local coffee shop and who had like a very stuffy movie night and i said i want to do that but i want to do that with bad movies and they let me do it and i started showing movies once a week i did it for three years i screened uh, like 150 films and um and the whole intent and it may sound pathetic i don't know it's either it's either genius or pathetic and i don't know which i'm gonna go with uh genius uh maybe, maybe that's what it is it's a little bit of both i was like listen i want to meet people so i'm going to set up this event the whole point was just to meet to meet friends like that was it i just wanted to meet people i just wanted to make friends 
And so I created an environment in which would attract them. So it was like it was a trap. I set a trap for people who were funny and outgoing and like int- like adventurous. And it worked. Um, and now I have uh, a whole group of friends and we and we still get together um, regularly to watch dumb stuff and like they don't even like it doesn't matter like i i can literally just say movie and they'll be like yeah we'll come (laughs) like like they don't care at this point like i'll tell them what we're watching and they're like it doesn't matter like we'll if we can make it we're coming i don't care what you're showing um but so i showed the holy flame in the martial world which is a shaw brothers movie and it's it's a late era shaw brothers movie (laughs) when they didn't know they didn't know what people wanted anymore they had been making the same movie forever Um, and i love shaw movies that new arrow set is insane. But this was like in an era where they were like, I don't know, let's just throw everything at the wall and see what sticks because we need a hit. And so for this one, it's like the whole movie is like on double speed. Like everyone talks <laughs> unbelievably fast, like hysterically fast. And everybody moves really fast and the plot moves really fast. And I warned the group because the whole group had never – I don't think anybody at this at this coffee shop had ever seen a single Shaw Brothers movie. <laughs> And they they might they might know who Jackie Chan was maybe but only because of Rush Hour you know like that's the level of like film okay. fan that I had and 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 so like I kept pausing the movie because I was like it, it's only been on for nine minutes <laughs> and they were just like get out of here that's it's amazing. only been nine minutes because there's just so much so much that's thrown at you so fast that it feels. It, it doesn't feel like boring. It's just like so much information overload. And I'd be like, it's t- we're 28 minutes. We're 28 <laughs> minutes into this. And they were just like, and, they ever, and everyone was just like roar. And they were just like, oh my God. Like, and they loved it. They had a blast. They were like, that was one of the most outrageous film experiences that we've ever yes. had. They're like, that was incredible. Like, like they weren't, they weren't like, oh, it's only, it's 28 minutes. Oh my God. How are we going to slog through this? They were just like, I can't believe how much has happened in 14 minutes like because the movie's on on like turbo turbo speed the whole the whole film that's incredible yeah um so sort of like what you're doing on a much smaller scale because we're still waiting for more people to participate uh scott uh mcdonald and i uh scott of eurocultav.com we do movie party crew the last saturday of every Mm -hmm. month where we pick a movie and we tell everybody we're watching it on twitter and we're like hey Come hang out with us and, and freaking we'll do a hashtag like we just did um Silent Night Deadly Night 3 colon better watch out and we did the mm-hmm. um the hashtag was uh, Frank and Ricky because I thought uh, yeah, I thought yeah, people would be Mosley. confused if I did hashtag uh Christmas in Twin Peaks because the movie has two cast members from Twin Peaks in it. So I thought I better make it a little more <laughs> <laughs> deliver more on the promise with Frank and Ricky. Uh, but yeah, what's what we do? We just hang out and watch the movie and it's really just an excuse. Um, because Scott and I are lazy about actually doing a podcast together where we're just hanging out and talking about the movie. And hopefully our pal Shane, uh, Migli Baca will show up too. And Tyler Miller might show up too. And so it's just the four of us probably costing ourselves a lot of followers because for an hour and a half on the last Saturday of every month, we're intensely tweeting about what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, God damn. Like, stop. Dude, stop I hate you. Mute, like, mute, I don't, mute. I don't yeah. even know so, what Yeah, no, I, I love that you freaking got people in on it. Because one of the greatest joys I've ever had in my life was showing my friend Jordan, who had never seen an Italian film outside of Fellini. I showed him... Uh, case of the bloody iris and he was literally bouncing up and down on my couch pointing and shouting at the conclusion of the film when you find out who the killer is and i was the best i was laughing i wasn't watching the movie because obviously i've seen case of the bloody iris 900 million times but just watching his childlike joy at seeing finally the reveal of the killer and being like totally down with all of it it was so amazing (laughs) uh i agree uh that's that's one of the more fun things as well if i have somebody who enters my my movie group that's new and again i I don't do it publicly anymore i stopped doing that at four or five years ago i just couldn't fit it into my schedule but you know like if 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 i've got somebody who knew wants to join 
um, which was happening regularly uh, pre-COVID. Uh, yeah. Post-COVID, it's rough, but we'll get there. But anyway, um, it would be like, hey, you know, uh, I would confer with my more hardened, awful, awesome friends and say like, okay, so we should probably like break them in on something that we know they're going to enjoy. Yeah. And, you know, so we would we would trot out like – like Samurai yep. Cop or Miami uh, Connection or Road to Revenge or something like that. That's just like, if you can't get with this, then you can't watch <laughs> anything with us. And then it would just kind of be like, all right, but you all have to shut up and not say, not, not, don't say anything. Like, yes, like just let it happen. Yes. We all know what's going to happen. We all know we're like, we're all, we're all ready for like the lines. Cause like, dude, I've, I've shown Samurai Cop to people to get them into my world I probably watched that movie. I don't know how many times. Probably close to ten <laughs> times at this point. Like I watched it so many times because it's like it's such a good gateway drug film. Where it's like if you're into this, if you're ever gonna get into this, like Samurai Cop is like such a good yes. entry level. Like it's so good. Like and if you and if you're down with and usually it's like all right. So when's the next one? You know that's usually that's usually the response. If I pick a good one, if I pick a if I pick one that's bona fide, that's just like yep, this is this is the one. Uh, it's like, all right. Yeah. Uh, so do y'all, y'all do this every week? Uh, cause, uh, wh- what's next week? What, what are we doing next week? Like, that's usually what I get, which is, which is good. Um, and that's how I know a person is, is cool is like, you know, if you can, like, if you watch like, you know, 25 films a year and one of them was Samurai Cop and you enjoyed the hell out of yeah, it my work is done all right yeah. <laughs> it's game on it's game on yeah nice. it's game on let's right, go before i pick the next movie let me stop this file i don't want to get too big i like to make sure it doesn't glitch out so the next film from action that i have picked you you did mention it just a few seconds ago um of course it's miami connection 1987 mm-hmm. holy shit <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh that one I I bought at a at a record store. I I turned in like a bunch of stuff and I got credit and I had just sort of this was like way a long time ago. It had like just come out on DVD and Blu-ray. I didn't even have a Blu-ray player at the time. This was like oh my god. More than 10 years ago. Wow. And uh definitely more than 10 years ago might even be like whenever that whenever that originally came out which was a long time uh i picked it up because i was like yeah I, th- I think i heard something about this and i brought it over to my friend's house and we were both just in love we we're like <laughs> this is so much fun like oh my gosh you know the the theme song yep. and and just the the joy of the film one thing that that makes the film so much fun is the we can do it vibe of it. Yes. You know, it, it, it's like a poorly drawn picture of a giraffe from a child and you know, they worked really hard on it <laughs> and like, you, you just like it so much better than like a really good artist drawn giraffe. It's like, no, nah, this is going in a frame and going on the wall. This is so much better. I like it a lot more than I like your interpretation of this giraffe. I like, <laughs> I like Miami connections interpretation of an action movie versus like an actual action movie like it's just so much fun so so joyful uh when you when i'm showing when i showed this to my friend uh the the sure sign that it was a hit with him was during the fake slow motion punch in the mouth where the actor yep. uh, the, the lead actor makes the other guy hold his fist in his mouth Yes. For a weirdly long, uncomfortable stretch of the movie. And my friend, as soon as it stopped, my friend looked at me and was like, could you please rewind that? <laughs> and he, or, he had or, never asked me to do that for a movie before. And now that's his thing when we watch something. He's like, can you please rewind that? I need to see that again. So like it's some dummy deaths and other action movies. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa go back, go back. <laughs> or or YK Kim pinching the nose of the person that he's doing a demonstration with with his toes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the foot. Like it's just, oh, it's just, it's just like the most. <laughs> it's so invasive and disgusting, and like it's like a total power move. Like why? Did listen, he do that? I'm I'm a grandmaster in Taekwondo. If I want to pinch your nose with my toes, I'm going to do it. Yep. And there's nothing you can do to stop me. 
Oh my God. And I think it's hilarious and you think it's disgusting and you know, yeah, it's, it's something, man. It's, uh, here's, it, here's a, uh, here's a weird, very obscure, uh, r- reference or, or factoid. The guy who directed that, uh, he's a Korean director who had done a lot of films in South Korea, came to the United States. He actually made a film before Miami connection called, uh, LA warriors, I think Ooh. is what it's called. And in the film, it came out in 1985. And in the film, one of the thugs in the movie, uh, the Tufts, is the guy who played Biff in Back to the Future. What? And it came out <laughs> the same year as Back to the Future. What? So, like, you can watch this movie. Because I was watching, we had watched Miami Connection like five times with my friends. And I'm like, you know, we should watch this other movie from the same director. I've really been meaning to watch it. And it's fun. It's not like Miami Connection, but it, it is fun. And we were, I was like, you know, that guy looks like Biff. That's weird. And then my friend looked at him and he's like, dude, it is Biff. That is, that is like the weirdest. Yep weirdest career ever like in the same year you are you don't have any speaking lines you're in this like obscure (laughs) crappy martial arts movie where you're just like getting beat up and then you're in the same movie that where you play an iconic role that you will never escape yeah but you know what i mean like it's just what a what a career like acting is a weird career man that you could do both of those in the same year i can only i can only imagine it's it's like uh, Liette and I play that game all the time where we're watching these movies and I'm like, oh my God, is that so-and-so from so-and-so? And she's like, no, nah. And I go, I'm like, I get, I get the freaking IMDb. I'm like, it is, it is. And she's like, okay, okay. <laughs> and then once in a while she'll get me so good. She'll just be like, you know, that's the girl from da da da. I'm like, no. And the person will be 12 in the movie we're watching. And I don't know how she can recognize this person who, you know, after puberty became this other person. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty good. At, I'm pretty good with that, too. That's awesome. Um, I can I can spot that. The movie is actually L.A. Street Fighter. Sorry. But oh, yes, it's right. from, ni- from 1985. And yeah, that's that's the weird factoid oh is that it's got Biff. And it's the same director as Miami Connection, who was not Y.K. Kim. Y.K. Kim uh did not direct my i mean he like i don't know he says he like co-directed or something i mean who knows I'm but sure like he wants that would help him if he if it were uh, true <laughs> uh yeah uh, i mean it's it's entire it's an, it's entirely possible I mean, right. who knows maybe the other guy walked off the set i mean it's like <laughs> he wasn't part of any of the any of the reunion shows at the draft house or anything uh, okay. and i don't think i don't think he's wanted to have anything to do with with the revival, it's just been YK Kim who's who's been interested uh, in that. But um, YK Kim, I think, also wrote like a motivational book and like also a business book. Yeah, and I was like, man, that's... I feel like I, I feel like I need to own those. It seems like the type. Yeah, that's that's great. <laughs> Hopefully, not a Ponzi scheme. Hopefully, it's actual business success. <laughs> I don't know, mate. If it was a Ponzi scheme, that might make it even more fun to read because it would be it would be like a Ponzi scheme from like twenty five years ago. <laughs> oh my god! So so, Miami Connection, obviously made in Florida. We got a segue into horror, but we'll stay in Florida because from your horror volume, I have chosen another pair of films, and the first one, of course, is Jacko. From 1995. Yes. yes. Um, I don't know if it's true or not, but I read that Jacko was made on a bet. That Ooh. that um, Fred Olin Ray gave the director uh, a little bit of footage. He had he had like the last footage of um, John, uh, Carradine. John, John Carradine. Yes. And he also had footage of Cameron Mitchell. That were co- completely <laughs> that were completely unrelated, shot like probably in different decades, and he basically said like, you know, I'm gonna produce this movie. Here's the footage. I dare you to make a movie that utilizes these these two these two clips, mm-hmm. and that's and that's where Jacko comes from. Oh my god, um, Jacko Jacko is fun. It's not. Uh, it's not my favorite in the book by any means. Oh, no. It has its, it has its moments. Uh, there's there's some very angry conservative people in the movie who like <laughs> who like 
who totally begrudge giving away candy for, oh to, for, for free because you should pay for everything, which is quite funny. And I, their deaths are very funny They're as outrageous, well. yes. <laughs> um, L- Linnea Quigley is in it uh, as a babysitter. babysitter? Yeah, yeah but... that's right. She's a babysitter. Um, so... <laughs> And I can't remember if she gets naked in or not. She probably does. She totally she probably does, yeah. Doesn't doesn't she have to like take a shower oh, or yeah. something? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Linnea Quigley's like one of those she's one of those actresses that I'm always there's certain actresses that uh, another one from the action volume, Cynthia Rothrock, like I feel uncomfortable with their nudity because I like them so much. Yeah. Like it's just like, you know, you don't need to do that. Right. Like which isn't to say that any woman should feel like like she has to or whatever, but like with them in particular, it's like you're so cool. You don't need like that's you're enough. That is why sorority babes and the slime ball bolorama is so good because Linnea doesn't get naked in that one, and she owns that fucking movie. Yeah, like she doesn't she doesn't need to, but she's yeah. often. Re- like pretty much in every single movie she's required to and it's always right. like i don't i'm not, i don't need that like yeah. first of all you've you've done it so much that if i if i did require that there's many other films that yeah. i can peruse and it's 1995 and you're and you're still doing the nude scenes like not that she's she wasn't amazing to look at but you're like dude where are you in your career in 95 because you know i feel like I feel like we need like an autobiography. I would you know? love it. I would absolutely can you, love can it. Can you imagine the stories she would have? I mean, she worked with so many yeah. di- on so many different Dude. films. Like, I'm sure her filmography is like over a hundred. And, and her bet. life was crazy. Like, I my I know my, I'm not going to give any details here, but back in the day, um, I found her email because it was all over her website. You just freaking email her, and I emailed her out of the blue. Mm-hmm. And just had a couple interactions with her, and her life sounded bonkers. And I was like, "Damn, uh, dude! Like, good luck." <laughs> you know, like I didn't know what to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, you know, and she's still yep. working. She's still, Hell she's yeah. still getting work, and she goes to the conventions and stuff. And it's like, God, give me, give me it an autobiography. I want to know more about all those David Dakota movies that you made. Yep. You know, I want to know more about like that level of filmmaking and like she there, she never turned down a role and she must have the most yeah. insane stories. I mean, you, she could probably write a whole a whole book just about her experiences That's on Return to Living I, Dead. I interviewed Brink Stevens through uh, email years ago and she is she, very well written, like very – she's this freaking brilliant woman and she wrote – so many amazing responses to my questions that I'm just like in my head. I'm like, bro, Brink, Brink, bro, write a freaking book. Yeah, she's she's another one that you know she was always yeah. like all those scream queens. They're always sold on their like, oh, they're gonna take your yep. top off or whatever. But it's like, I, I don't, I don't mm-hmm. need you to Brink. You're exactly. in, you're interesting. Like I just, I, you're engaging. You don't. You like neither one of them need to no. take off their clothes in order for no. me to pay attention to their performance. Like they're they're very interesting. Um, I I always get excited when Linnea shows up in one of the many garbage <laughs> movies that I watch. I'm like, Yay! hey, it's Quigley. All so, right. Because I, oh, I, before I move on, uh, I just saw Jacko for the first time this year. As because Liette and I were trying to uh, flesh out our so to speak our freaking uh, Halloween viewing. And I'm going to be honest, mm-hmm. the poster for Jacko was an instant. No, I hated it. It just looks dumb. It's just, it's just a big old jack-o'-lantern generic jack-o'-lantern man, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Nope, hard pass. I don't want to see this. And then I watched it and was like, what the hell is wrong with <laughs> this is so great. Cause it's just, it's, it, it is not good. I will. Yes. Um, it is definitely, in your book under the I'm leaning more towards awful, but it just charms my pants off. I just love the charm of it. Yeah, it, it has it has moments. It has it's it's definitely not a no, waste not at all. to watch it. It ha it it for sure has its moments. There's a lot of there is a lot of fun to be had. And one thing I will say about every single book 
or that I've written it and all the reviews when it comes to these films, first of all, my opinion may not be yours. So don't like if anybody who bought the book was like, Oh, he said this yeah. one's not good, but I, this is totally my jam. Fun. Go watch it. You might be like, he is full of beans. This is the best <laughs> movie I've ever seen. Um, I am just, it's just one man's opinion. Uh, and it often really comes down to who you watch yeah. it with. And, and whether or not they're in, enjoying it and engaging with it, um, because that makes all the difference as well. I mean, I've I've read reviews like I literally today I just got the new Bleeding Skull book um, in the mail, and I was thumbing through it and enjoying it because it's like, oh my oh, god, there's so wild. much stuff in here that that is like perfect for my books, and there's things in here that I've seen, and I'm like looking at the ones that I've seen. And, and like compare views and their experiences are often not mine. Like they're like, oh, this movie sucks. Like don't watch it. And I'm like, man, yes. I love that. Like, like hell, like hell spa. That movie's hilarious. Nobody's seen it. Um, it's a, it's way too long, but somehow earns it. It's like a really dumb spa related right, right. slasher movie that is just like of all the spa slasher movies. <laughs> it's the one that nobody pays attention to or, or even knows exists. And it's just like, Oh my God, like, you know, the locations are clearly somebody's basement and not <laughs> like a gym. And like the, the evil gym like cuts off some dude's uh, finger, I think it is, but they use like the most unwieldy device to do it with. And it's just, Wow. Oh, I've just had so much fun and I watched it by myself and I'm like, God damn, I really need to watch this with other people. And then I read Bleeding Skull and they're like, yeah, yes. don't bother. And it's like, but but I really enjoyed it. So, um, you know, I, my hope is that it's more like putting a spotlight on these films. In your case, you didn't know they existed. And maybe you'll just be like, well, you know, Jacob said it's really boring, but right. I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Maybe you'll just exactly. be tickled by it. So if it sounds cool, watch it and don't necessarily take my my opinion as gospel. A lot of the films that are in my books have been um, test driven <laughs> by my friends, you know, and then a good chunk of them are ones I watch by myself or maybe I watch it with my wife. But, you know, the ones that go over really well with my friends, I usually try to make a big nice. point of that in in the books, you know, because it's like. It's fine for me to say it, but if you know, if I got ten people that are all saying, "Oh my God, that was amazing," um, you know, you, you got you got a winner. Um, and and it really does depend on on who watches it with you, because if they just are hating life the whole time, then of course hey, you're not going to like the it. The way I got into reviewing movies, my first garbage ass reviews I wrote back in freaking two thousand five, two thousand four, what were all because I vehemently disagreed with the reviews I read that inspired me to watch it or what really drives me now, the, those, those reviews you mentioned, like the don't watch this, you know, like I have an Italian horror book. It's called the fucking title is so inspired, bruh. It's called Italian horror. And this dude <laughs> hates Italian horror. And the whole book is a no go just about like you can take your 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 classics that pretty much you know everybody agrees on that you know people when they think of Italian horror you know the top 5 movies come up and he loves those but everything that we've covered on the doom show from a, from Italy that isn't your stock stuff he hated and it's hilarious like he's that book is a big reason what got that got me into writing about films it it's almost like why did you keep writing I, these dude god like, like, why did you make a book of this? Is it yeah. like, I don't get it. Like, if you if you don't have an appreciation for it, then what are we doing so, here? So, Los Angeles, the year 2006. Citywide crime has increased 300%, and a gang called the Hell Riders control most of the city. They're heading for the zone. The Hell Zone. Where laws don't exist and murder is the local currency. Good day to kill a cop. Ooh. Now that wasn't very neighborly, was it? Lab says it might be AIDS vaccine. Well, if the hell starters are running this stuff, let us go undercover. Anyone can visit my club. 
If they want to play. A pair of tough cops on an undercover mission enter the Hell Zone, where a criminal mastermind has created a game, an arena of death ring fighters. Their job, to expose an illegal AIDS vaccine racket. You use a stick like you've used one before. Yeah, well, I practice a little. But they discover that skill doesn't always determine the victor in the arena. It's run by a computer. It was Drexel. Watch you out of there. If we have a contact, it's too dangerous. Hey, that guy's a cop. I have a message to give to your husband. I'm going into the zone to get Drexel. LAPD. Rock and roll division. Firepower. Moving on to my second pick from the horror volume, Devilfish, 1984, from our boy, Lambava. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is, you know, I thought it was a, a Jaws ripoff, and it technically is, but it has no shark. Nope. Nope. It's a it sea is, beast it is not. of unknown a, something. <laughs> yeah, g- giant tooth with, fishy of with, not uh, shark. With tentacles. <laughs> Origin. <laughs> Yes. Um, God, the oh boy, that's a that's one that I watched about yeah, a million yeah. years ago. Um, we did it for Movie Party Crew pretty recently, uh, and it uh, <laughs> it is so we like it has one of my favorite double endings where the movie's winding down. We're done. We're out of here. Freaking uh, let's let's uh, freaking swab the poop deck on this fishing boat. We're done, and then all of a sudden. They call in the cops and the SWAT team on airboats. Oh, God, I guess this is another Florida movie. And they're running around with night scopes and machine guns to go find the fucking devil fish at night. And now the whole movie's at night in the swamps. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah, the Italians loved shooting at either, like, either getting... Uh, establishing shots in yes. Florida and then shooting the whole Miami thing Golem. somewhere else, but <laughs> pretending like it's Florida, Florida, right? Um, or or shooting in Florida, oh, like it. there's just some yeah. something about it, like it makes you wonder what the like, like it wasn't Connecticut <laughs> or like I don't Utah, know West yeah. Virginia or something. <laughs> it's like why? Uh, well, there, there's seems like there must there's there's got to be a story there of like well okay well why why right. not Louisiana why not like if you wanted something like tropical you know there's there's anything in the Gulf uh would probably work it's why it's like, Florida how um, come my town my my Tampa why the hell don't we have any incentives for filmmakers we have had so few movies shot here it's embarrassing like of course not talking about the indie people tampa with all of our freaking death metal heads they all just want to make freaking horror movies so as far as like indie horror uh tampa does does rather well but like freaking any like hollywood money or foreign money coming in I, i would just love to find out if for like three months in 1982 there were like six films shot here by like Claudio Fergasso and Bruno Mattai and, you know, and like right. Umberto Lenzi, but everybody went to Daytona and Miami and the Everglades and shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. It is odd. Yep. Um, my city sucks. You know, thumb, thumbing through my, my, uh, my, my horror book, um, I, I can I can I think I can definitively say volume two has much better selection. I'm like <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know, maybe maybe you feel that way too. I'm looking know. at it, I'm like, you know, this, this no, is you, you got killer this... clowns from outer space, you got Jack Frost, Iced is in here. This is a fucking hot book, dude. Uh oh man, Jack Frost, those movies are so much fun. And nobody everybody sleeps on on the second one. Yeah, because it Everyone, came out in the nineties. Like, Everyone's like, nope everybody's like oh yeah we'll we'll watch jack frost but we're you know jack frost 2 is a bridge too far listen (laughs) 
<laughs> it is not a bridge too far. That one is bonkers as well. See? I had so much fun watching that with, and I, and again, I watched that one publicly, uh, and we had so much fun. MVD is putting that out on Blu-ray. Oh, nice. Uh, it's coming See? out. I saw it. I was like, oh my gosh, Jack Frost, you is getting a Blu-ray. Like is that's got to be like the last sign of the apocalypse or something. Like <laughs> and that. No, full disclosure, I am one of those people who did not watch it. So I am based on your recommendation. I am totally down with it. Like it's I mean, if you enjoy Jack Frost, which is totally stupid. Oh, it's wild. And and it's yes. And very wild. The second one is gorier. And and it has like little little Jack Frost snow evil snowballs. Oh, boy in it and and it's shot on video <laughs> it has lower budget more gore and it's just yeah man like it's it's fun like it's for me for us we we enjoyed we enjoyed it a lot like and i i was a big roll of the dice i had never seen it before and i was like i don't know man this might be this might be one of my really bad decisions of which i had i showed movies publicly that i had never seen before mm -hmm. I did not preview them first, and boy, did I make a mistake. I've done that. In one particular instance, I I had a friend who needed a ride, and we were watching uh, – what was it? Angel Fist. We were watching Angel Fist, which is a, a – I believe it's a Sirio Santiago movie made in the Philippines, and it's like crime and intrigue and kickboxing and stuff, and uh, – I, I had to leave and I, and, and I was like, I gave it, I gave the remotes to my friend. I was like, Hey, can you just like make sure everything goes okay? And I got to go pick this, pick this guy up and I'm going to bring him cause he wants to come enjoy. And as soon as I left, apparently there was like a ridiculous amount of like nudity oh, no. and he was just like, Oh my God, Oh my, Oh my God. Cause like I would always fast forward through the sex scenes publicly. Cause it's like, that's weird. I'm going mean, to yeah. sit in a room with like 15 <laughs> people and there's just like gross, you know, graphic, big haired '80s sex going on. No, we're fast forwarding through this. We're we're getting past it. We're not. That's too uncomfortable. And then when I came back, and he was like, "Dude, there was so much stuff I had to fast forward through while you were gone." I was like, "I was gone for ten minutes." He's like, "I know. The whole the whole time you were gone, there was just stuff that I had to fast forward through." And it was really awkward. And thanks for that. I felt really bad. I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry to have put you in that See, position." By my friend, um, who's been who's been coming over for movie nights, um, his wife and him had to live apart for a while because she was still finishing up her schooling in another state. So he he got indoctrinated into watching movies with me before she even moved into town. So when she finally joined him, he'd been talking up like, oh, watching movies with Richard, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, okay, I'm excited. And uh, I picked an unseen. <laughs> I've, and I, well, first I picked a known, a known crazy shit, um, which was Strip Nude for Your Killer, which um, mm -hmm. if you don't know someone's wife or significant other of any gender, don't, don't spring Strip Nude for Your Killer on them. Just mm -hmm. don't. See it. See, and I have notes about that in my books too. Like, hey, by the way, this one has like crazy amounts of nudity. Yep. So maybe just be aware of that or there's right. like lots of sex. Yeah, I, like be aware. I just knew that based on her sense of humor, it'd be fine. It went over okay. There was just – it was just mildly uncomfortable. Then for the bonus feature that night, the second one, the double feature, I picked a little film called The Outing from 1987. It's, uh, it's a beloved horror – movie that people love called the lamp oh yeah and, and yeah. everyone loves yeah, it and yeah and i had no idea that it has a freaking traumatic ass rape scene oh that's the worst in the movie and bless my friend's wife's heart and like her doctorate was like about rape in vietnam during world uh, during the vietnam war <laughs> Good and Lord. I'm sitting with her like, yo, guys, this is ruining the movie for me. Yes. And, and I am, you know, I've, I've probably talked about on the show before, I'm not a big fan of sexy stuff in movies, but the, the thing I hate is a rape scene that has no point, that has no, yes. I'm, I'm not against the act being portrayed on film as long as it is either ridiculously punished like over the top cocks cut off 
dudes getting their freaking nuts shot off hilariousness or you see consequences or right don't show the woman give in and get into it i'm talking to you europe yeah <laughs> the, the 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 european straw dogs dude the yeah. european cut thank you that boom right there the the european cut of tombs of the blind dead i never ever reach for it ever yeah. Because yeah, no. the main the, that, the lead actress gets raped and then she's buddy buddy with the guy who did it. The next scene, uh, yeah, fuck, yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, it, and I mentioned that in my book too. Like, whoa, this has like a bad sexual assault in yeah. it. Like, re- really double check your audience or at least be aware of when it is in the film so you can fast forward through it. Because I, I, oftentimes in exploitation films, <laughs> it's just there. Yeah. Like, it just happens. Like, it's just like. Oh, this is another bad thing that the bad guys did and they're going to get their comeuppance or whatever. But it's like, listen, we already knew they were bad guys. It's not enough. We were already on board. We already, yes, th- these are bad people. We don't need to go that far. Yeah. You know, that and animal violence will oh, both dude, like just yeah. ruin the party. I'm out. I'm out. Like, and I, I am right. totally like very few staged animal violence scenes get me. Like, it has to be like super emotionally invested in the story and the emotionally uh, emotionally invested in the animal, like that it's a cool dog or a cool muskrat mm-hmm. or whatever. Those are fine if if it's obviously fake and or the animal is obviously not in being scared out of its mind by the actor yes. or actors. You yes, know, that's I can deal with that. It's because of all the Spanish. I found that the Spaniards, bless their little hearts, in the 70s were worse than the Italians when it comes to animal violence. I have seen things that Spanish film directors, I'm I'm guessing they're sociopaths. Yeah. Like, I don't understand what they were doing, man. Right. And and, and it's like, how do you how do you get your whole crew? through through that as well like okay this is the part where we're gonna like do this awful Ugh. thing to this pet and like there's like a whole crew of people making this film like there has to be Bless like em. 10 people that are just doing a job at least yeah. and they're all and the editor and they're all like <laughs> okay yeah so this so monday's the day that we're gonna do that horrible thing that yeah. it's just gonna be on my conscience until the day i die okay like i I'm, <laughs> all right see you monday <laughs> <laughs> the editor is like their their hair turns white over the weekend working on the fucking footage. <laughs> right. It's like I need another edit of this horrible Ooh. atrocity. No, you're not going to get one. I'm done with that. I'm never doing that again. Uh, yeah, it's so it, right. And and so those things are, are, are noted in my book as well. Like I try to remember the you know, your audience might be sensitive and you need to be aware of that. Like you as the person, you might think that it's just like the bee's knees and then you trot it out to somebody and they're like, what's wrong with you? You know, like you need to, <laughs> you need to have some sense of like, I'm fine with this horrible thing on screen. It doesn't bother me, but you need to at least have the, have the, the perspective of, you know, other people may not feel the same way and you did invite them over and maybe talk to them about it first yes. or something like, exactly. I don't know, like, Hey, by the way, this movie we're going to watch has stuff like this in it. If that's going to bother you, I have an alternative that doesn't have those things in right. it. Have a backup. Yeah. So I like it. So the last two films I have here are from the, the sci-fi volume of awful awesome. And uh, the first one is like the most vanilla thing I've picked. I think this is like super, super easy. Uh, people have probably heard of this or seen it. Freaking cyborg from 1989. Oh yeah. That is uh, one of my childhood favorites and continues to be a favorite uh, into my adulthood. Yeah. See, and, and I included that because it looks like a like a movie like if you don't know like you're one of those people who doesn't really watch a lot of like cheese wad cinema <laughs> then you're going to think like oh cyborg that must be like a total awful awesome movie and it's like ah it's not it's a fun van damme movie yeah uh it's solid it works it's it's uh a lot better than perhaps the poster 
uh, suggests <laughs> um, the uh, you know it, it's it's fun, but it's not one that you're gonna sit around and like make a lot of comments with your friends with. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's just, it's fun. Like it's, it's fun, but, but very competent. Uh, it's not, not one of the ones that's, that is going to be your, a laugh, a laugh riot watching with your friends. I don't think, but it, you, right. you'll enjoy it, but not, not for awful awesome reasons. Cause is that, am I mis am I remiss, <clears throat> misremembering that? Is that Albert Pune? It is. Yes. Okay. Cause he has shit that's way crazier. Yes. He's very, he's very like hot and cold. Like some of his movies are frankly boring and then other ones are very entertaining, you know? So he's, he's one of those directors that's kind of like proceed with caution. It's like, eh, some of them are fun. Uh, uh, I'm a big fan of Nemesis. Yes. Um, Oh yeah. All the, all those movies are ridiculous. The first one is great is like legitimately like a lot of fun and great. And then all the sequels are just like, what am I watching? (laughs) And is there have to get around to them someday? And is there more? Um, (laughs) Please keep making them. Yes. (laughs) That one, that one is, uh, it's very fun. Uh, Much like I think in my action, when I included uh, blood sport, it's like blood sport is one of my favorite movies. Shut up! I would release it on the Criterion Collection. Like it's on nice. my it's on my Mount Rushmore. Like I can watch that movie every day at all times. I once watched Bloodsport on on our Spanish language channel because I was like, I know the mo- I know the story. I don't care that it's dubbed in Spanish. Like this movie rules. Like, but I included it because I feel like people would think. And, and and like Killer Clowns from Outer Space as well. It's like no, Killer Clowns from Outer Space is like legitimately fun and well made and good. But people think it's an awful awesome movie. So I include some of my films. Some of the films are yeah. I included are like that too. That are like yeah, you might think this is what it is. It's not. It's actually quite good, and you should still watch it. But don't expect it to be an awful awesome experience because that's not what it is. You know, I've never seen Bloodsport. <laughs> Really? Oh my god! I have no idea. That's one of those movies that people are like, "Oh, it used to be on all the time." And I'm like, "What channel?" I never caught it mm. a single time. I did. Uh, uh, there's a. I, I live like two and a half hours north of Los Angeles, and so we have like one or two different LA stations. And it was always the LA stations that showed the good stuff. Nice. Um, where they would show blood sport all the time um or like ktla or uh, that was usually the one or they would show um uh the thing all the time or you know nice. just just movies that are just part of my dna at this point um, blood sport was definitely one of them uh i absolutely adore that movie i think it's i i i think it's pretty damn close to a perfect film Oh shit, dude! I'm gonna in my, watch it. In my opinion, anybody else watching it would be like, "This is just another tournament movie." What are you talking about? You're crazy. <laughs> but having seen it, uh, like perhaps an embarrassing amount of times, it's really lean and kind of perfect and really masterful See? in how it tells the story. Nice. Like it's just, it's just, it's so good. It doesn't. The only misstep in the whole film, in my opinion, is the fact that he has a romantic uh, – there's a romantic angle to the film that it doesn't need at all. And even that is fine because right. you at least get to see Jean-Claude's butt. <laughs> and that's, so it's worth that's it for worth that. the price of admission right there. Which he prominently does. It's hilarious. He's like, he's like pull, pulling on his like banana hammock <laughs> after, after having had – what can only be assumed as being a fantastic lovemaking, which you don't see. <laughs> you just see him pulling up his banana hammock from behind and you see his butt because <laughs> he hasn't, he, he's got a, he's got an impressive oh, butt boy. and he loves showing. He's always shaking it in other movies. I know that. That's true. He, you know, when you, when you got That's it, right. you got I it. I know. I mean, I know personally. So <laughs> the final film uh, is uh, Night Beast. From 1982, oh. another uh, first time watch. I want to say I think I saw it. I can't remember if it was this year. I, it was definitely a pandemic Blu-ray buy when you know we're not going out to eat. Got a little extra spending money for stupid shit, so I was able to get Night Beast uh, sight unseen and uh, jaw droppingly stupid and amazing. It 
it is so much fun. It's another one of the it's 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 really what I look for. It's it's a type of film that I'm looking for where it's like a regionally made film. I think Don Dohler was from Baltimore and his it, it, the the trauma disc has like a whole documentary on it as well. It's called Blood, Boobs and Beasts. Does does that is that Blu-ray I, have I'm that? I've ported all that stuff over. I didn't look at the extras yet, but I hope so cuz it's a it's a great documentary um where he he talks about how I think when he was like 30 um, he had been writing these magazines, uh, like detailing, like how to do different special effects. So like, he kind of just figured stuff out on his own, as far as I can tell, as far as I know, like he just figured out like makeup effects and all these things that you could do in your movie. And so he was putting out these zines that were explaining how to do it, but he had never made a movie and he was working at like his family business and somebody came in and robbed the place at gunpoint and he like legitimately thought he could die. And after that experience, he said, well, life's too short. Well, here I am. I've been making these magazines. I've always dreamed about making a movie. I'm going to make wow. a movie. And so that's why he got started making films. And Night Beast was not his first film. He had, he made films before that. Um, but that one is just so much fun with like the – the sheriff with his with his man oh, perm yeah. and like <clears throat> and and the incredibly awkward oh, sex boy. scene that that's in the so film <laughs> and uh, yeah uh, you could tell that nobody was happy about it including don doler like um famously i think in that documentary he mentions that the woman in the film in that in that love making scene was his mother's hairdresser Oh boy. And and so like like this is like someone who who like does his mom's hair all like regularly and has for years and so he was he was essentially told by a distributor like you need to get some you need to get some you got to get the 3 Bs and your other films are lacking on the nudity and you need to get that in the film. And so he had to awkwardly ask her like hey are is this something that you'd be willing to do cuz it would really help me get this movie distributed and she was willing to do it but he was incredibly uncomfortable oh, man. doing it because he he knew her and like she knew his mom <laughs> and it was just like just like and so nobody was happy like nobody in the room was like having fun at oh, all like boy. everybody was like oh like can we just not can we just get this over with and it feels that way it feels that way very much so <laughs> Uh, but I, I love Don Dohler. His other films are, are fun as well. They have that same let's let's just throw together what we have available and let's make it happen, which I love. I love that feeling, especially especially when you get like the feeling that like maybe uh, like a whole town got together <laughs> to make the movie. Like, like, like the director was able to convince like a lot of people who have no business doing anything with filmmaking to be involved and they all just That's had a so blast. Cool. Like. You know, Night Beast is definitely a film that it doesn't it doesn't feel like it was trying to like fill a quota. It was trying to fulfill a dream, um, and it feels that way, which is which makes it a lot more enjoyable to watch, I think. And his other films as well, um, they have that same. He basically remade it. Like Night Beast is essentially a remake of one of his previous oh, wow. films. He was just like, ah, I'm gonna do the same thing again, but I'm gonna See, do it just better. like Jess Franco. Yeah. 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 So it's like, you know, he, uh, and, and then he, uh, he sadly ended up, uh, he had cancer. I think that's what, what he died from. He's no longer alive. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, similarly, he was like, you know what? I know my time is limited. I'm not going to make any more movies. I'm going to spend time with my family and that's it. And wow. I appreciate that too, that he was like, uh, no, I'm not going to spend my last remaining year on earth try to make a movie i'm gonna spend time with my family while i still can which is just like could you be any cooler don doler i don't think you can like he's nice uh, just a remarkable guy awesome well dude those are my picks and I, let's let's wrap this puppy up okay uh one thing i have to say however is i did hear on a recent well, i don't know i guess it wasn't a recent uh -oh. episode but uh oh you said you would never ever watch a Neil Breen movie ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I ha I have to tell you, you you ah, you got to reconsider. Creeps you me out. You can't watch. Oh yes. Oh Creeps yes. He's very creepy. So he, I'll never watch the room. He's, I can't. I can't. 
I understand not wanting to watch the room because that one's like very hyperbolic in people's reaction to it. Like it's uh, listen, the room is okay. <laughs> it's fine. Oh no, it's it's not about the film. It's because of um, what's his face, Tommy Wiseau. I met yeah, him. I can't. I, I actually met him. I went to one of his screenings, and he creeps and, me out. So yeah, bad. He, he wouldn't let me. Like I got a photo with him, and he wouldn't let me leave until I shook his hand. Okay. Which was kind of odd. Um, yeah. And I, I have a friend that worked on a film with him and he told me all kinds of stuff and just oh. like n- nothing necessarily <sighs> bad. Just like they're like, yeah, that's just, yeah, that's him. Like that's him. Crazy. That's okay. him all that's, the time. That's better. Like that's who he is. Uh, right. He's not putting it on like that's unless he's, unless he's really committed to that role. Like it's not a put on like that's just who he is. That's, that's Tommy. <laughs> that's him. Um, no, Neil Breen is a total weirdo. He's. <laughs> He definitely is. Um, my friends and I have talked about how they really need to make a movie together, except they probably murder each other because they're both egomaniacs. Uh, <laughs> Neil Breen's something else, man. Like he put out like a five and a half hour DVD on how, on like a like how to make a movie. Whoa, nice. And it, like it's him, and you have to pay like some exorbitant amount of money, like one hundred and fifty dollars for the set, and it's wow. and it's like unbelievably long and it's just him talk him talking about it's apparently not even really helpful like it's just it's really <laughs> it's very very strange um it not every single one of his movies is fantastic but i'm i'm just so fascinated with him and his process and right. that he doesn't seem like he knows people watch his movies that they don't that they I mean they're like me like they enjoy them on a perverse level I suppose of course but he also believes that people genuinely enjoy them as well and he it when I mention a vanity film every single one of his films is the most vanity they're the most vain <laughs> film to possibly every woman wants to sleep with him yep yep and he's usually some sort of quasi godlike figure he's also like a hacker and he's also uh, trying to reveal the truth that the world is very corrupt and that all those people should be brought to justice. And it's just, <laughs> it's wild. Again, a friend of mine, he said, uh, he, he recognized one of the actresses in one of Neil Breen's films. He said, Oh my God, I know, I know her. I've worked with her. Uh, I'm going to hit her up about this because my friend's also an actor and a director. He makes small budget movies. And he said, apparently she told him that he had like no personality. Oh God. She, she said like, he just didn't seem to have like any kind, like there was nothing to hang. There was like nothing to hang your hat on. Wow. The only thing she said was that he was very particular and that all the women on the film had to wear this particular top, like this particular like spaghetti strap top and that all of them had to like have like the top few buttons unbuttoned. Oh, no. Like that was – and then we noticed. We were like, oh, my god. That's totally (laughs) the case. Like they are all wearing the same shirt and they're all unbuttoned. So that was – and she was just like, yeah, I don't know. He was just kind of odd and he didn't really have much of a personality and it was just a very weird experience. And she also felt that it was strange that he was so particular about those buttons. Like it was like a – like he had a thing for it. Oh, boy. His first film, he – there's a bunch of credits in the film and then at the end, it says all credits that begin with the letter like N and B are fictitious and were made up by Neil Breen. Like it says that in the credits. Like he, like he, he, he put together a list of fake, like a fake caterer and a fake like car rental company and right. a fake, and like, and then he outs himself on his own credits. Why did he? Do I that? don't know. <laughs> like maybe he thought that those, like you had to have those. Like well, it's like legal. yes, like you have to have them in. In I don't know. I don't. The legal department. I don't know. <laughs> And you know, I and I do respect the fact that he's made a thousand more films than yeah. I have or ever yeah, will. He, and it's incredible that he has he's like an O tour. <laughs> yes. Uh he's also very specific about like if you screen his film, let's say you, you have a the, a theater and you want to screen his film, right? He's gonna send you a disc. Now all and when he sells his movies, they're just like crappy DVD Rs that that come in a jewel case. And they have no and they have nice. no art and he charges like thirty five dollars for them. 
And it, when you when you when you screen one of his films, you have to show him photographic evidence that you destroyed his disc. That's awesome. Yeah. That could be the big that could be the big thing at the end is all the people rush up to help destroy the disc. Uh yeah, like like you have to like have the audience like do he's, it. He's seemingly like very hostile about you showing his movie. Like he's like like it's a negotiation that it's apparently not easy. And then you it's like, well, I'll send you the disc for the for the movie that you're gonna show. But you have to break it and you have to show me that you book it because I'm really concerned right. about pirating. Well, that I mean, that's that's good trying to control it. That's uh, good. That's not that's not effective in this day and age. But. Exactly. It's like, well, I could have just ripped it and then broke the discs. I mean. <laughs> no one would ever do that, though. That's that's against the rules. Yeah. bro. I will for you begin to consider maybe watching one of his I films. I would recommend Fateful Findings. I think Fateful Findings before yeah. I leave this mortal coil, which is hopefully sooner than later. Yes, I I I think Fateful Findings would be a would be a good one to go with. My I don't know, man. My friends and I have just I showed the preview of his first film Double Down and we laughed so hard at the preview that I legitimately thought that I was going to hurt myself. <laughs> like, like I became, like I was laughing and also concerned yep. at the same time that I'm like, I'm going to rip my, my gut. Like I'm literally going to bust yeah. a gut. Like uh, this is bad. Usually, usually a Jeffrey movie, I will um, scream laugh into my hand and then I'll look at my poor wife who's sitting next to me and, and I have to apologize for <laughs> Um, how horribly loud my guffaw scream was. And uh, usually there's a little tightness in the throat afterwards because I have lost my fucking mind. Well, yeah. you know, some someday when you're ready to break down and watch one, we will have to discuss it and you have to. Yeah. You no, know, you'll be the first to oh, know. We'll, we'll cover well, it. It needs to be me, you and Jeffrey because like he, he, Absolutely. Needs, he needs to he needs to get in on that party, too. I'm sure Jeffrey's probably watching one of Neil Breen's movies right now. <laughs> they are they are something. Uh, they can also be unbelievably boring if you're not watching them with somebody. Yeah, alone would be bad. It would be bad. It would be very bad. Like you can't – that's one of those ones where you got to like hold someone's hand tight and you got to get through it together. Well, maybe their hand. <laughs> Folks, you can find Awful Awesome Action – Horror and sci-fi. The first volumes, volumes one of all, each of them have their own volume one right now at Amazon.com. Jacob Gustafson, thank you for hanging out, dude. It has been way too long. Yes, thank you for having me. I was very excited when you when you sent the invite, and and I'm I'm glad that we were able to to make it happen because this has been fun. It's been a lot of fun. I haven't podcasted in forever. Dude. Yes, you're you're making it the biggest and longest talking. In anyone's pants area, <laughs> or slacks. Yep, depending on depending on uh, when you're listening to this. Yep, I'm a morning guy in, in the pants and a night guy in the slacks. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my new slogan. Oh boy, folks, I'm gonna go now, and Jacob's gonna go too. So bye. <laughs> This is The Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is The Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can write in to Hello, This is the Doom Show. Use the email doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. Doom Show episodes are available on record and 8-track cassette.